Hello everyone and welcome to Quick Med where medicine is explained quickly and easily. In this video, we will be discussing Epson seizures, how to characterize, diagnose, and treat them, so let's get to it. Epson seizures are one of the most common forms of pediatric epilepsy and they typically occur between 4 and 10 years of age. And epidemiologically, they are more likely to occur in girls than boys. So how do these seizures typically present? So keep these features in mind because these are your typical Epson seizures that we will use when discussing diagnosis next. These seizures present a short and frequent episodes, usually around 10 seconds in duration, and they can occur multiple times a day and often do. But interestingly, their subtle symptoms often go unnoticed or are misdiagnosed as inattention on the part of the patient. But they differ from inattention because they cause an impairment of consciousness, usually without a loss of body tone. And this is key because you can't really get the patient to snap out of these episodes. These episodes typically start quickly and end quickly, and they usually involve an arrest and activity, but there are some less common findings which can include things like eye blinking, head nodding, and lip smacking. Another key feature of Epson seizures that's not listed here is that a majority of these seizures are easily provoked by hyperventilation. So we can often use hyperventilation as a method to help diagnose the condition and also when obtaining an EEG, which we will discuss soon. So this brings us to the diagnosis of absence seizures, which involves the typical features we discussed earlier, as well as an EEG which reveals 3 hertz of generalized spike waves. Keep these EEG findings in mind because they are often tested on examination, so let's take a look at an EEG strip here. You likely will not have to read an EEG finding on an examination, you'll often just be presented with the finding and have to know how to associate it with an absence seizure. But let's just go through this for our own learning. So in the beginning, you can see some normal brain activity, but then there's a sudden increase in frequency there. And this is what we're referring to as our generalized spike waves. If you'd like some additional information on these EEG findings, there's actually a great YouTube video that was made by another channel, and it's about one or two minutes in duration where they discuss this in detail, so we'll link this down below. So how do we treat Epson seizures? The first line treatment and the one that you need to know is ethosuximide. In the majority of cases, patients respond very well to this treatment and most seizures resolve before puberty. Let's now go through a practice question to solidify our understanding. We have a 5-year-old female who was brought to the pediatric clinic by her parents because her teacher has noticed that she stares blankly into space for several seconds at a time. During these episodes, she does not respond to any questions or commands. An examination is unremarkable. An EEG is performed and shows 1-3 to three second bursts of a 3 per second spike in wave activity. No abnormal limb movements are noted during these bursts. What is the likely diagnosis in this patient? So let's look at some of the key findings here. Here we have a 5-year-old female, so she fits the age range for an absence seizure here. And we're told that she stares blankly into space for several seconds at a time, but the key finding here is that she does not respond to any questions or commands. So this is more than just daydreaming. This is an impairment of consciousness. And then an EEG is performed, which shows the spike in wave activity that we discussed earlier. So the answer here is A, absence seizure. Let's look at some of the other answer choices to see why they're incorrect. So B, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or ADHD would be incorrect here because we don't have any evidence of hyperactivity and also there would not be any impairment of consciousness with ADHD. Generalized tonic-clonic seizure is incorrect here because there are no abnormal limb movements noted during these episodes. Migraine headache here is incorrect because there is no evidence of a headache and migraines would not lead to any impairment of consciousness as well. Vasovagal syncope is incorrect here because it would lead to a loss of consciousness and not an impairment of consciousness and this is due to a drop in blood pressure and heart rate. And interestingly, with vasovagal syncope, there is often a set of prodromal symptoms like pallor, diaphoresis, or palpitations which occur prior to the loss of consciousness and in absence seizures, these occur abruptly and so there is no prodrome here. Alright everyone, we hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to like and subscribe so that we can keep posting videos like these. And as always, good luck studying everyone.